Hello, right today um, I'm making a video on a ZVS driver that I plan on building. Now, believe it or not, I've actually never made a ZVS driver, um, and there's a few bits that I'm unsure about, would like some suggestions on. Now, this is basically my configuration I'm sort of going to go for. It might change around on the piece of metal. The piece of metal is a 5mm piece of aluminium, but we'll get to that later because I've got a different plan to what most people would normally do, which is uh, quite normal for me. Um, right, I've got uh, IR FP260 ends, uh, I've got 40 of them. I plan on having 10 on the ZVS driver. Um, that's a little bit extreme, um, but I've got I've got nearly 20 kilowatts at my disposal, so I want at least something that can take at least 2,000 watts, you know, um, to run a induction here. So basically, I've got these little quick connect things here, um, which I'm going to use for each MOSFET. Um, but I'm going to bridge, or the plan is to bridge over each one with insulated 50 amp cable so they will all be on one in parallel with the first one like so you have just a normal ZVS driver with four extra in parallel on each side obviously um, got my inductor um, capacitors um, Zener, Zenia diodes, whatever you call them, they're actually 20 volt ones so it can take a little bit more um, now, a couple of things is, one, is it okay to take the wires over the top of the MOSFETs? Is that going to cause an issue with the oscillations? I have no idea, so if anyone's got any ideas on that. Um, I've got my 10k ohm 2 watt resistors. I also have some 470 ohm 5 watt resistors like that. But I also have some of the same like that. Now is there one or the other which is better? Is it better to use that type or that type? This is the kind of things I need to know. Um, there's also the fast switching diodes, uh, well actually ultra fast um, switching diodes that people would normally use. They're pretty standard what people would normally use in them. Um, I'm upgrading now I'm either going for one of these, and I don't think it's going to be able to focus on that, so I'm just going to read off what it is. It is made by ST, and it is a STTH10002 TV2. Um, that is actually two diodes in one, so where you'd normally have, you know, but it's not like a, um, I can't think of what it's called, um, where you've got two diodes linked end to end um, uh, is it a thermistor? no not a thermistor a thyristor um, it's not like one of those they're actually come two separate just one and one so it would be either a case of using one of these which is a lot higher ampage but slightly less lower voltage I know I've got the problem if I blow it, I blow it and it's then got to be replaced. So if that does happen, I'll end up just using these. Or do we go for the slightly larger? These are ultra fast switching. These are any fast switching, but they are fast enough. I can't remember what they exactly are. If anyone wants to know, they are made by IR. They are T70HFL20. SO2, um, I think there's 70 amp, a ridiculous amount of volts. Um, but they they switch a little bit slower. Um, they're obviously quite a large, quite a lot bit bigger. Um, and I'd have to use two of them, so it'd take up a bit more space. Not really that much of a problem. Um, so, you know, but these are within the frequency range, um, the switching rate that you know is acceptable for a ZVS. Um, now you're probably thinking how am I going to keep all this cool? Um, 
you probably all heard of, uh, I think they're, is it a Peltier device? No, I only heard of these not so long ago. And um, basically they get hot on one side and freezing cold on the other side. But you have to have a very good heat sink on the hot side. Now what I plan on doing is underneath this sheet here, I'm going to have the Peltier devices. And then I'm going to have this underneath sandwiched together.